Hello, my name is Emily M. Bender, and I'm pleased to be presenting this perspective paper together with Chirag Shah. Our title is Situating Search. We start from the position that information retrieval technology should support people in doing search as a subtask in the context of very larger tasks, should support people in always increasing their information literacy, and finally should provide transparency and accessibility with respect to the provenance of the information returned. We see all of this in the context of information systems as public goods. This paper is written in response to some recent proposals, primarily from Google, to replace web search as we know it with uh, language model-driven conversational agents. And here we're thinking of Google's Lambda system and also the Rethinking Search uh, conceptual paper by Metzler et al. from 2021. Now, it might seem initially appealing to have a conversation agent as the thing you're interacting with to get access to information, because that seems like it might be closer to talking to a knowledgeable human. However, we find that these proposals are flawed both technically and conceptually, and furthermore, do not answer our desiderata for search systems. Starting with the technical flaws, we note that language models are trained to generate strings, not to model meaning. In brief, the argument from Bender and Kohler 2020 is that a machine learning model cannot possibly learn what is not in its training data. And the data for language models does not provide the machine with any signal it can use about the meaning of the language. This in turn is because languages are systems of signs that is pairing of form and meaning. When we speak languages we already know, we are working with a system we have already acquired, and so we can use that system to take in form, reconstruct meaning, and then get access to information. But that acquisition process requires access to both form and meaning. Thus, while the distributional information absorbed by language models can make them extremely useful components of larger systems, the fact that it also enables them to generate seemingly relevant and coherent text does not make them trustworthy sources of information even as sounding conversational makes people more likely to trust them, and that's going to be misplaced trust. Furthermore, we note that using language models to generate answers breaks the link between the answer the user is seeing or hearing and the information sources. The proposal in Metzler et al. is to generate URLs to provide some links, but that doesn't actually fix it because there's no guarantee that the URL is pointing to the actual source of the information, especially in the context of answers that were synthesized from multiple sources. Turning to the conceptual flaws, we believe that search systems shouldn't actually answer questions, but rather should support users in finding answers, and that's an important distinction in framing. Furthermore, you might think that conversational search is more flexible because you can take multiple turns, etc., in the long-term future where the stuff is working as advertised. However, it actually narrows the user's field of view over possible answers and thus is less flexible. And then finally, we note that there's real danger in computers, quote unquote, speaking our language, because it gives them, um, together with their veneer of objectivity, unearned credibility. And here we are inspired by the work of Sophia Noble. And we note that it is far too easy to look at a page full of stereotype confirming results and have the impression that everyone must think so, um, or worse, that that's just how the world is. Um, and uh, nonetheless, if we are looking at the arrayed results, we are positioned to ask, where do these come from? What else is in the corpus but not returned? What else is not in the corpus and why not? Contrast this with posing a query as a question to a dialogue agent and then receiving a single answer, possibly synthesized from multiple sources and presented from a disembodied voice that seems to have both the supposed objectivity of not being a person and access to quote unquote, all the world's knowledge. Where are the toeholds there that would allow a user to start to understand where the results are coming from, what biases the source data might contain, and how those data were collected, and how the modeling decisions might have amplified biases. Now we will see how different kinds of search scenarios are addressed by these Google proposals. For this, we use this framing device taken from Belkin et al. called Information Seeking Strategies or ISS. ISS are built around four dimensions. So that gives us 16 possibilities. We also looked at 20 user intentions and that are taken from different works. For each of these 16 ISS and corresponding in user intentions, we asked how uh, a Google proposed uh, language model based uh, search system will address that scenario. So here we're going to take a look at only a couple of them. It, it turns out that uh, those models cannot actually address most of these 16 ISS. But let's take a couple of examples. Here's one, who can help me avoid being evicted? This falls under ISS2. For something like this, 
a language model based agent will synthesize some text based on any combination of various sites and then generate an associated citation in the form of a link to one or more of them. But nothing in that system design ensures a solid, reliable link between the synthesized text and the cited resource. But more importantly, for this scenario, the, it, the system does not display a range of possible resources and thus prevents the user from being able to build their own model uh, of the space of possibilities that are available. Here's another example. What is the number of a 24-hour advice nurse? This falls under ISS 30. For something like this, once again, a language model-based approach would get a, a string of digits that look like a phone number uh, that is associated with some nurse-related information. But in doing so, it is missing the point that the user may be in a different area code, maybe in a, in a specific uh, hospital system or have a specific uh, health insurance plan. A human uh, being would consider these aspects before responding to this query. In general, we argue that search is more than simply retrieving facts. There have been many cases where simply answering a question or query uh, results in something really bad. For instance, uh, what is the lang ugliest language in India? A human being would challenge this pre presupposition, but Google and others have actually responded to this question. Um, more recently, we've seen some uh, agents uh, that recommend a 10-year-old to touch an open electric outlet with a coin as a part of the dying challenge, right? Um, we've seen uh, in the seminal work by Safia Nobel uh, that searching for black girls results in things that are just perpetuating our biases. So in other words, simply responding to questions or queries without considering the context, without considering the user intent, their strategies, the social context can result in some really bad uh, information coming to the user's way. So what do we do? Well, uh, assuming that these systems will continue existing and perhaps even double down on their approaches, the least we believe we can do is add some transparency and accountability to these systems so that the users can see uh, and know why some information is uh, presented to them, how it will synthesize. Um, but if we have our way, we can envision a very different system than what we, we are seeing here a system that can cater to all the 16 uh, ISS and all the 20 user intentions, a system that gives more agency and control to the user and caters to different information literacy. But more importantly, we can envision a system that goes back to the days when these information access systems were meant to be public good right, rather than private profit. So I know that's a bold claim, but that's what, what this perspective paper is about. And so we, with that, we open up for discussions and thank you for your attention.